In Canada, forests burn regardless of human presence. We are in the path of a natural destructive cycle. In the face of our changing climate, these cycles are being affected in ways we don't yet understand. We need to prepare our communities as best we can. In 2018, fires in British Columbia released enough energy to power all of Canada for an entire year. Can human ingenuity adapt to this natural fire cycle and redirect this enormous energy potential to constructive ends? In Fort Ware, British Columbia, the Quadacha Nation is making this a reality. We're in a very heavily forested area, uh, surrounded by uh, spruce, uh, aspen, balsam, lots of dead pine because of the pine beetle. And uh, yeah, so very, very high risk with uh, a fire. It's a, it's a situation where it's a, a matter of not if, but when there's gonna be a big fire. You look at the fires nowadays, they're not, they're not just a forest fire, they're fire storms. Because of this threat of fire, a treatment regime was recommended. It is appropriate where a natural disturbance pattern of stand initiating fires, or crown fires, occurs every 100 to 125 years. The idea is for hazard reduction rings to imitate this natural disturbance frequency and provide biomass to produce energy in a power plant. The community is at the center of the rings. Each ring is two kilometers wide. This is wide enough to reduce the chance of a catastrophic fire and improve detection and suppression. The interface zone can use a special type of fire smart treatment that involves thinning and pruning the stand, like we saw in Alkali Lake. The inner ring is cut over the course of 12 years. It is divided into 12 equal sections and one section is cut each year. Each year's harvest is replanted after cutting so that supply is continual and the forest always grows back to support local plant and animal species. The inner ring is cut first to immediately reduce the hazard for the town. The first area cut in each ring is in the direction of the prevailing winds. The next ring to be cut is the outer ring over 40 years in order to reduce risk to the growing stock. Then the next outermost ring is cut. Then the final ring is cut. Once a section is cut, it will provide significant resistance to fire development until age 20 and good resistance to fire till age 40. Meaning a four kilometer width of land is reducing the chance of catastrophic fire because the regrowing trees are small and have widely spaced crowns. Once the last ring is cut after 100 years, the first ring will be ready for cutting again. This is the system that was recommended in Fort Ware. A combined heat and power biomass plant has been in operation in Fort Ware for three and a half years. So we, um, to clean, uh, clean up the dead pine, we take it and we chip it. And then it, uh, we, we do that across the river and we haul it over to the, the biomass energy plant. Uh, the biomass system, the changes that it's made is, is 
nothing but positivity. Uh, we're creation. It, even in the future, if it doesn't make us a whole bunch of money, it's going to be energy for the people here at home. We're creation and just just uh, self-sustainability. That's what Kodachi Nation is all about. We don't want to have to to ask for too much. We want to create things to make sure that we are our own bosses here. My name is Eric Hawken. I'm a community works manager here at Kodachi Nation Fort Ware, BC. So I run the maintenance department, the housing department, and I overlook the biomass and greenhouse system. Basically the biomass right now feeds uh, electricity back into the grid, meeting us with BC Hydro. Eventually into the future we may want to push the biomass project and get more more energy back to the grid. So the, the biomass system themselves in an Aboriginal nation creates a lot of windows for separate trades to be trained and yeah, a lot of, lot of employment opportunity when it comes to the chips, the harvesting of the wood from the field. There's a lot of jobs around these biomass systems for, for nations. And it's an exciting thing because these are the jobs that community members love. You know, working with the wood, going out there, you know, even with the chipper plant for the bioenergy, people love that kind of work. And our sawmill is great because there's a little bit of value added. We, we mill the timber here for our own, our own uses and, and also, well, to build the bridge mods and to supply board and batten for the homes in the community and it provides jobs, local jobs. It employs about half a dozen guys. Well, the biomass system is put, up, put together just to, to basically take our beetle killed wood. We do woodlot cutting for most of the beetle killed wood, which is also fire prevention within the nation. Also the, uh, the extras from our mill project itself. Uh, we produce uh, heat and power through these machines. The engine alone is cooled by, it's, it doesn't use antifreeze, it uses water coolant. And uh, we ship all that glycol and plus water to the school and to the greenhouse. Our heating system for the school is, it, it, when it was designed, was uh, propane off of propane boilers. And now, because of our bioenergy plant, we uh, supplement the propane with the uh, bio plant. Some of the residual effects of the plant, like the greenhouse, provides lots of educational opportunities with the production of uh, fresh uh, vegetables. I get heat from uh, biomass from next door. That's a wood waste facility. Gives me through the air here. And then I have propane burners here as well. So I'm Ruud Graat, I'm the head grower in the greenhouses here at Fort Waring for the Quadratia Nation. In this greenhouse we're growing tomatoes, three kinds, uh, TUVs, tomatoes on the vine, beefsteak and cherry tomatoes, and I have a bit of melons in here as well. And then there is another greenhouse with uh, cucumbers and peppers and with a bit of a propagation area for starting. And then there's a third greenhouse where I have some cola crops, like beans, corn is in there right now, and some carrots, and so on. Uh, success in the, as in producing, it's producing enough. For the whole community, I'm looking into some markets, or we are looking into some markets, neighboring community, and some camps around, maybe a mine next year as well. Just. Otherwise, I'm producing way too much for the population here, that's, that's, that's for sure. I can get it off real fresh as well, which makes it taste better, because of the shorter channel. Right? It goes from here to the couple hundred meters and it's at, at its destination, so I can pick it way riper than what you buy in the shop, so it's actually nicer too. It can be done at other locations, definitely. I think if we continue along the path of economic development and, and uh, keep all the work in between the two communities that are up here, you know, moving forward, I think uh, we can create quite an economic empire here. For communities in the forest, the threat of fire and destruction looms. 
but with proper planning that imitates natural disturbance, the threat can be controlled and the power of fire can bring opportunity, jobs, independence, energy and food. <music>